David is a 44-year-old uh, gentleman uh, from the Midwest uh, who was involved in a severe construction accident greater than one year ago where he fell 22 feet and uh, suffered a, uh, a severe fracture to his neck and spinal cord that left him essentially paralyzed from the uh, neck down. Uh, part of this paralysis involved a, an inability to breathe on his own and he was ventilator dependent. Since that time, he's been cared for in the Midwest and uh, has uh, been seeking help for some of these problems that face him. He, uh, he found us uh, uh, in his search for treatments to get him off of the respirator. And uh, we, uh, we were able to, to bring him here to New Jersey to our Center of Excellence at Jersey Shore to uh, to provide him with uh, specialty care and a very rare procedure intended to uh, be able to remove him from the ventilator and to uh, afford him the opportunity to breathe on his own. On November 2009, David fell at work 22 feet and broke his neck and um, in the C2 level area he's considered a quadriplegic and since then he's been ventilator dependent and um, we basically one of our goals is to get him off the ventilator because it's really hard to take care of him so we had one attempt in February 2010 and that failed and so I began researching why did it fail? Or I asked the surgeon at the time, and he said it, they couldn't get his phrenic nerve to work, and, and that's when I began to research on the internet to find somebody out there that could do that, and that's how I found Dr. Kaufman on the internet. And even though we're, we're you know, quite a distance from New Jersey, his office was able to help, help us, um, assist us in Um, the procedures, how to, to get him to the surgery. So I'm really grateful for their, all their assistance. If this surgery works, I'm hoping that it'll open the door for a lot of other people to, you know, maybe come to him to, because it is definitely a lot easier to live without this ventilator. And if they can get off the ventilator, I hope, you know, that'd be their best hope. I bet a lot of people don't know that this surgery really exists, but maybe if they get it out a little more, it maybe helps somebody, maybe save somebody's life later on. I'm sure nobody knows this surgery exists because when I did my research, I found one doctor on the West Coast in Los Angeles and Dr. Kaufman that could do any kind of procedure like this, and that was all that I was able to find in the United States. I just hope that my dad is able to like live a better life because he has children and and that's what's important. He's like a very like outdoors kind of person and you can't really go outdoors with a vent and so yeah, it's a big deal. With the outcome of the surgery, we're hoping that he'll be independent from the ventilator so he can live a normal life as much as possible. It's pretty costly to be on a ventilator and to take care of him, it's 24-7. The surgery is rare in the sense that uh, combining a placement of a diaphragm pacemaker with a nerve transfer, a nerve transplant, uh, is done, has only been done a handful of times in the past. And we are one of only two centers that has ever performed this. Uh, the diaphragm pacemaker itself is very rare in, in that uh, it's, it's done only a handful of times in the United States every year, uh, despite the fact that there are thousands and thousands, and thousands of patients that may benefit from it. Um, uh, but the combination of the two procedures makes it uh, exceedingly rare. And uh, <clears throat> we have developed some procedures here in our center um, which has allowed us to offer this procedure to, to the uh, patient we're uh, treating tomorrow. Details of the surgery tomorrow uh, include uh, uh, the, uh, taking the patient to the operating room, 
Uh, he will be monitored so that we can perform nerve testing during the surgery. And uh, essentially, we need to uh, identify and access the phrenic nerves on both, sides, on both sides of his neck. The phrenic nerves are the nerves that run from the brain uh, down to the diaphragm muscle or the breathing muscle. And those are the nerves that are not functioning because there's a disconnect between his uh, brain and his uh, diaphragm due to the spinal cord injury. So what we are intending to do is to place uh, a wire electrode around those nerves on both sides. That wire electrode is connected to an implanted uh, receiver, not unlike a heart pacemaker. And that receiver uh, receives signals from a radio transmitter that's external that will allow electrical impulses to be fed to his phrenic nerves and, and provide contraction of the diaphragm muscles that will essentially initiate the inhalation or the, the first phase of breathing, which is taking a deep breath. The surgery will take anywhere from two to four hours, and the patient will then be in recovery and in the hospital for one to two days before he goes back to the rehabilitation facility, and the device will then be turned on two to three weeks later, and he will begin his rehabilitative process um, towards using the device on a regular basis. So the procedure we'll be performing tomorrow will be intended to uh, reverse ventilator dependency in this patient with a high cervical spinal cord injury. Uh, basically at this point the patient can only uh, breathe with the use of a respirator that essentially breathes for him. Uh, what we would want to do is to implant what's called a diaphragm pacemaker which uh, is a device that is placed around the phrenic nerves. Those are the nerves that uh, run from the brain down the chest into the diaphragm muscle, which is the breathing muscle, and will act uh, to stimulate the diaphragm to contract, therefore uh, allowing him to breathe without the use of the respirator. In addition to that, based upon some intraoperative testing, we may or may not perform also nerve transplants to the phrenic nerve to help increase the chance that the surgery will be a success.